This was Christmas of, I think, 2007. He was 19 at the time. And ironically, I'm doing laundry about a month and a half later. It's like early February. And all of a sudden, Aaron, white as a ghost, walks in and he goes, I think my son just emailed me. Mm. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And this was before FaceTime and all of that. And so, you know, we read the email and it was beautiful. I'll tell, let you tell the story of how you found Aaron. But um, we were thrilled. We were over the moon. I always kind of envisioned this boy just knocking at our door, like this man in a lumberjack <laughs> outfit, because that's the only picture we ever saw of you. It's this like little two-year-old in this little yeah, yellow lumberjack. Stick over the shoulder yes. of the bag on the back. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, that's kind of where the story of the three of us began. Shit's about to go down. I'm feeling something in my spirit. Chats and Tats with Aaron Della Vidova. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Chats and Tats. Me, Aaron, your host. I, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's the Christmas season. It's that time of year. I'm think we're all thinking about family. We're all thinking about the ones we love. We're all, you know, it's that time of year to really bring that in, really open up our hearts, and really take account of what matters. You know, we work our asses off all year. We care about things that sometimes we look back on and we realize, wow, that was pretty meaningless. But I think this is that time of year where most of us start thinking about what really what really matters. And I'm a year older. And what did I really do this year that counted? So with all that in mind and all that on my mind, I thought it'd be cool to do the family episode. And on this episode, you are going to meet. And, I, and also, I should add that a lot of you guys have been writing me asking about my personal life. Like, what do you do? I, who's your wife? I see her doing this. On it. And people are asking questions. I'm like, you know, we just need to come out of the closet and maybe reveal a little more of, of what I do when I'm not doing the show and I'm not tattooing and all these things. So for all that, I'm having my beautiful wife of 25 years on the show today and my son, who I met 15 years ago on the show today. I have two daughters at home. One is 19, proud of her. Go 18. Into 18. <laughs> Yeah, I round up. I'm a dad. <laughs> um, she's going to Berkeley, and we're so proud of her, and she's smart, and she's awesome. And I have a 13-year-old daughter living at the house. And so I just want to be clear, I have other children. But I think today's episode's a little bit kind of about Dustin because of the our, our relationship is unique. We'll put it that way. So with all that being said, please welcome my guests today, Holly and Dustin. Holly and Dustin. Otherwise known as Uli and Ustin and Uran. And I can get into that probably later. We'll get into that. It has a little bit to do with this cool vest I'm wearing. We have a gang. We have a family gang. But luckily, we don't encourage violence. We just encourage love and cooperation and hiking and other weird things. Not weird things, but just <laughs> things I, I don't want to have to do too much editing on this episode. So I'm like holding myself back. <laughs> Anyways, we should probably start with I'll start with a bit, a bit of an origin story. Like I said, this, obviously I'm here to introduce my wife and, and my son, but really the show, this show, I wanted to kind of highlight a, a special thing that occurred in my life with Dustin. When I was a young man, I was, you know, I was a pretty rowdy young kid. I, I wasn't playing by the rules in a lot of various ways. One of those ways, including sex at a very early age. In fact, I was having sex, I think at the age of 15. Um, which is shocking to me now because I have, like I said, a 13-year-old daughter and I have an 18-year-old daughter. So I've seen them go into those ages and I look at them and I'm like, oh, what? I was having, <laughs> I'm looking at these kids and I'm like, I had <laughs> sex with a 14-year-old girl? To be clear, I don't know how that gets edited by the internet, but I was 15, okay? But still, I look at these children and I'm like, that's nuts, man. I I, I didn't even, at the time I felt it was it was normal, I guess. I don't know what gave me the idea, to do the idea to do these things, but I did. It resulted in this young woman becoming pregnant. At the time of the pregnancy, I believe I'm a little vague on some of this. I was 16. She was, I think, 15. And so there was a, some family meetings about this, you know? Um, and in those meetings, I mean, to be, to be straight up, my, my family, who were pseudo-Catholic, I mean, when I say pseudo, meaning they were, we were all raised Catholic, but none of us really went to church after 
you know, grandma and grandpa weren't making everybody go. And their their vote was abortion, straight up. Let's just get, let's just take care of this, clean and simple. Let's get this baby away. This is a problem. It's not good. I mean, this is a young man. How's he supposed to raise a child? All the things you would think. But the woman or the girl I got pregnant, her her family was Mormon. And not just Mormon, but her father was a bishop of the Mormon church. He was uh, had a, a public career. He was, I believe, running for district attorney at the time. And, and so... You know, he had um, concerns about how this would look for his reputation, things like this. So he, they, and also the Mormons don't believe in abortion. So they, they straight up said, no, no, there will be no abortion. In fact, this is the paperwork we need your family to sign. It's going to relinquish you of any rights to this. It won't be your problem anymore, but we'll take care of it from here. The girl, this girl's going to go to Utah. She's going to have this child and we'll take care of it from here and just sign here. And we, and we did. And um, there was even some, I don't even idle threats about you need to do this or we're going to make your family's life kind of uncomfortable. My dad was an entrepreneur and I, nobody wanted problems and, and it took care of what we thought was a problem anyway. So everyone signed the papers and that was it. Years later, I meet my beautiful wife, Holly. And of course we fall deeply in love and start a life together. And, and I, and I, and I, at some point share with her, like not, not even later on early on, like, Hey, just to be fair, like, I have a child and I, I at this point knew that you, you were a son, not a daughter. And, you know, it's kind of getting in the weeds a little But Tanya, the girl I got pregnant, somehow mailed me some photos of you and this is your son. And you were like a little two year old chopping wood and, you know, brought tears to my eyes. But I knew who you were. And in that photo, they said your name was Zachary. Anyway, I share this with Holly and uh, you were just very cool about it. Like, OK. And I I told you, I was like, look, he's a young child right now but there could be a day where this we meet him and this is part of our life so i don't want to be a surprise and you were you were very good with that and then just like i said you know i don't know how i guess when you know 16 years after i told you that we all knew you knew this is about the time that um zachary at the time we thought uh would be turning 18 years old and uh and i without nobody even talked about it and i, I know you have something to talk about because you were doing a little stuff in the background i didn't know about but I was like, in my back of my mind, I'm like, open, every day I'd open that email or my phone would ring. And I was just like on edge, like, who knows? Like, this is the time, you know, because it was an open adoption. They were, I was told that meaning, or at least I was told when he turned 18, he would be told and it was never hidden from him that he was an adopted child and would be told who I was. Now, I don't know if that's really how it played out. In fact, I think Dustin will tell you it isn't quite how it played out, but that was what was in my mind. I'm like, well, if he turns 18 and they hand him my name. I bet you he fucking calls. I mean, if he's got my nature, I'm wildly curious and rambunctious. Like, I bet you he calls. So a year, not a year, a few months goes by and nothing happens. But, you know, eventually, and then maybe I'll turn it over to you at this point and you, Holly. But maybe you start and let Dustin pick it up. But, yeah, I get this email and it's you. Yeah. And you're yeah. saying to me. Hey, uh, I think you're my dad. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and of course I, at the time I was all in, I, I, I probably should have been more, more cautious, but I'm like, who else yeah. is going to write this to me? Yeah, I do have a son and yeah, he is about your age. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah. much, what you know, you some of the people in my life, you better have that checked out. I'm like, Oh, come on. I mean, we all know who this is. Well, then we met. It was well, well there you go. You're going up too fast that we did. Yeah. And when we met is another story. I want Holly to talk <laughs> in a little bit about and forgive my wife if she's a little teary-eyed <laughs> this is very emotional for you all right. right yes well i get i got a boy <laughs> i always wanted a boy um yeah so when you and i first met i was freshly 22 and i think you were 27 at the time or something and you told me about dustin and i just thought oh my gosh we're zachary how special how awesome and you know jump forward i we get married and we're planning our own family and I kind of do the math. And I always was curious about this boy that Aaron said, look, I'm never going to find him and insert myself in his life. If he finds me, that would be amazing. But I'm a tattoo artist. I live a different life. He was raised by a Mormon family and his birth mom and you had never met him, but knew a lot about him. So when I did the math and I was like, I think he's about 18 now. And for a Christmas gift for Aaron, I wanted to find Dustin and just give him this gift of he's alive. Here is where he is. Don't contact him, but your son's alive. And because of his name changing and not knowing the birth mom's last name, um, it didn't go very far. 
This was Christmas of, I think, 2007. He was 19 at the time. And ironically, I'm doing laundry about a month and a half later. It's like early February. And all of a sudden, Aaron, white as a ghost, walks in and he goes, I think my son just emailed me. Mm. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And this was before FaceTime and all of that. And so, you know, we read the email and it was beautiful. I'll tell, let you tell the story of how you found Aaron, but um, we were thrilled. We were over the moon. I always kind of envisioned this boy just knocking at our door, like this man in a lumberjack <laughs> outfit, because that's the only picture we ever saw of you. It's this like little two-year-old in this little yeah, yellow lumberjack. over the shoulder yes. of the bag on the back. <laughs> and so um, that's kind of where the story of the three of us began. Yeah. And um, we, again, before FaceTime, you guys had you many hours. You keep FaceTime. Meeting. No, FaceTiming, be able to video. Oh, be able to video. Before all this was before, <laughs> I think before so. Yeah. yeah. And so um, lots of long phone conversations went um, over between the three of us, especially between the two of you. And listening to the two of them, I'm just like, okay. Because at first you're like, is this really my son? And of course, pictures came through. And it's just, there's no denying that these two are related than hearing them on the phone together and how he was brought up and everything. It was just, I'm like, okay, this is, a, he, he is his spawn for sure. So um, yeah, about a month and a half after that. Well, let is, me forward. Now you're going to yeah. jump forward to when he comes out, but sure. let's let Dustin speak about this a little bit. I mean, yeah, where, what, maybe, um, maybe, I don't know if you want to go back to, you know, I started off when you left my world, you know, right. you were just still in that girl's belly. Maybe maybe you could bring us up through that a little bit. Like, you, what happened to you? Where did you go? What happened? And it built it up to where you made that email to me. Yeah. Um, well, of course, up until I was old enough to have my own cognitive thoughts, none of this was on my radar. But what I do know is that I was adopted. And people always ask me, like, how did you find out you were adopted? Or when were you told? And my answer, the true answer has always been like, I just always knew, which means I think that my parents were telling me before I even understood it, mm -hmm. you know, so I just always had like a foundational understanding of I was adopted, but it didn't really mean anything to me until I was probably like later in my elementary years when I started thinking about that. And then I do remember having weird thoughts like, I wonder, I was adopted, like, I wonder if my parents are like homeless or something like what what's what's the deal you know but like a little kid imagination about those things but um so yeah uh let me back up so yeah I, was, I obviously was adopted at a very young age my parents uh moved me out to california where they lived at the time san luis obispo and um they're mormons uh, which has a lot to do with the adoption story and how it all went down but uh, up until I was two or three, we lived in San Luis Obispo. Then we moved to Utah to kind of join the, the Mormon nation. And as I got older, I started to be a little bit more inquisitive, but not a ton. Every birthday, I would get a card uh, and my mom would give it to me. And she would say, this is from your birth mom, Tanya. And it would never be like there was never anything written in it. It was just like a Hallmark card that said whatever the Hallmark creator said. And it would say something like, love your mom, Tanya. And I was just like, oh, that's from the person that gave birth to me. Cool. Like, where's my presence at? And, you know, because I, I was young, didn't really think about it too much. So that carried on. I, I didn't think, you know, I always wondered and I was always told I would ask. I remember this. I would say, well, OK, my mom's name's Tanya. What's my dad's name? And they would say, we don't know or we don't know who he is or what his name is. So I was like, that's mysterious. I wonder what he's like. But it's hard to figure out what to fill in and what not to fill in to not make this a nine hour story. but military maybe yeah you, okay. so this is why I, you joined the military yeah if that, or, that seems or why life became increasingly uncomfortable in that utah lifestyle yeah i don't think you're here to talk shit on the people who raised you i've no, met them no. and they're wonderful people yeah. and they they loved you in every possible way they could they never abused you in any way they were provided they did all the things parents should yeah. do i don't want to speak for you but i'm aware of the fact that I, I kind of am saying this, I think, because of DNA and what I've noticed after meeting you over the last 15 years is it's super real. Like oh, you yeah. carry characteristics and mannerisms and opinions in you when I met you that you could that are so identical to me. But yet I never told you any of this stuff. You couldn't have picked it up because you weren't around me. 
Right. And I think one of those things when I heard you were raised Mormon is I was thinking like, well, if he's like me, he's going to have a hard time because I do not fall <laughs> well into structured religion or structured yeah. society or any of that. And I yeah. didn't know if that was a fact, but go ahead. Was oh, yeah. it? Was 100%, that the 100% a fact, the whole nature versus nurture thing. So, yeah. So I get older and and there's tension rising with every year, every birthday. Um, I'm just being who I naturally am, but that's creating a lot of tension in the household because I'm not following this this program of of righteous living and being a, a devout Mormon. I'm not I'm not following the program. So I'm like the black sheep of the neighborhood, of the community. I mean, I wasn't the only black sheep. I surrounded myself with other black sheep. But in Utah at that time, in you know, in the nineties, I guess, and I'm probably still that way, but getting increasingly more progressive. It's very polarizing. It's you're in or you're out. And it made for an interesting environment to grow up in because it was there wasn't a lot of gray area. It was like you either went to seminary and church and did that, which was like 90 percent of my like, you know, middle school, junior high, high school was all that. And then the folks on the other side, which I ended up on, were viewed as like these these uh, the outsiders, outcasts, outcasts, you know, and we weren't doing anything heinous, but we weren't, you know, we were partying a little bit and doing that kind of thing. and. So anyways, needless to say, that created a lot of tension in the house and drug experimentation was coming into the picture with my friends. You know, it was it was innocent weed smoking and things like that. But some of my friends started getting into heavier stuff. And so I saw the need to get out of there um, because it was a very small town, tiny little town I grew up in. Great place to grow up. We had a ton of fun and I have a billion stories about how awesome that was. But but I started seeing the writing on the walls like there's nowhere to I felt there's no opportunity here unless I assimilate and become one of these people. I'm not, that's not happening. Uh, the friends I have associated with the black sheep are kind of degradating into more dangerous realms. You know, I remember, I mean, they started doing pills and stuff and I was thinking that's not good. So anyways, I thought about a way to get out and didn't really have a plan uh, at all, but I was like, well, I could join the military. I'm about to graduate college and, or excuse me, high school. So didn't have like a, a raging desire to go fight American wars or anything, but I needed to get out of Utah. And I was like, well, that'd probably teach me a thing or two and set me up for future successes. So to like kind of get in and not fully commit, I joined the reserves air force and that got me a plane ticket out of Utah, got me to Texas and, and tech school and boot camp and all that jazz. And uh, the night before I left, I was having a big shindig with my friends huge get together, what we'd call an MIP party, a big minor in possession party, lots of <laughs> beer going around. And I get a phone call from a number I don't recognize with an area code I don't recognize. And I answer it. And the voice on the other end is something like, is this Dustin? Yeah. Hey, this is Tanya. I'm your birth mom. I've waited 18 years to hear your voice. So I'm like dynamited. I'm just like, what is happening right now? So I leave my own party, go outside to get away from the noise. The short version of that is she tells me her daughter, Alexa, found me on MySpace because that was the, the yes. rage of the time. So she did some of her own PI work. Her daughter found me. And I don't know if my phone number is listed on there or what, but she calls me, tells me, yep, I waited 18 years to hear your voice. Always wanted to talk to you. I just didn't feel it was my place. You're 18 now. And I'm like, well, this is amazing. This is so great. I have so many questions. I have so I could talk to you for hours. And I did that night. Actually, I was absentee from my own going away party for hours talking to her. And eventually I was like, well, let's just make sure that we have concrete contact information and we'll keep in touch going forward. But I get on a plane tomorrow and I go to boot camp. I'm not gonna have a phone or access to any communication for several months. So fast forward, I go to boot camp, and uh, when I'm allowed to have some normal privileges again, she's sending me uh, letters and stuff, and we start talking on the phone again, but the letters come in, and the one that I remember so clearly is a letter that comes in, and it's a photo of my dad, and he's sitting on a couch with some like spring break socks or something like that, <laughs> tank top on, he's got a nice, Tall boy in his hand, and that's actually a glass bottle of, <laughs> of beer. But he looks just like me. He's a little bigger. And I'm like, damn, that looks a lot like me. That looks like my brother, you know? Uh, you're probably 18 in the photo or something like that. And, uh, and on the back, it says your dad, Aaron Della Vadova. 
So that's the first time I ever heard his name. I've never heard Aaron. I never heard Della Vadova. I never heard anything about that. So now I have access to the internet. So I go to my <laughs> laptop and type in Aaron Della Vadova and just see what I can find. And it's like thousand pages of Google re results of uh, his tattoo work. I believe at that time there was videos of him tattooing Joe Rogan, like back when the Joe show came to Guru Tattoo, things like that. And I was like, this guy's like a celebrity. Holy smokes. I'm pretty sure that's my dad. He looks a lot like me and I, it's all adding up. So I'm like, I'm pretty nervous about how to contact you. And uh, I don't have a phone number. Hadn't so, you just gotten your first tattoo before Googling him? I, I can't remember. Who, it, it must, yeah, it must have been. Because I think it was right before that, me and my, my guys went out and got some flash off the wall. I had to get some old English lettering because that was hard. In, in that time, uh -huh. you had old English down your ribs. So. so I think I had just, yeah, I had just finished getting my first sweet rib piece. And then I figure out who I think you are. I'm like, I don't know if he's my dad, but whoever this guy is, he's a heavy hitter, kind of famous tattoo artist. And God, I hope he's my dad and I hope he'll talk to me. But a lot of anxiety, a lot of apprehension. So. I ended up, you know, I figured out that you worked at Guru Tattoo or owned it. I wasn't quite sure how that worked out. I think I read the bios and figured out, oh, he owns this place. So I called Guru. Uh, it's probably Alvin or something that answered the yeah. phone and was like, oh, yeah, you looking for Aaron? Yep. He works these days. He's not here right now. You want me to take a message? And I was like, no, I'm good. It's like, okay, it's plan B. I email him. And I remember writing the email. I was like, hey, this... This might be uh, weird and feel free to delete this and not write me back. I tried to give you a lot of outs, <laughs> you know, but this is what I think I've, I'm, I'm tracking. So let me know if you're interested, if this is real, if you want to talk. And obviously my hopes were really high, but I tried to keep my expectations low because I didn't, I didn't know how it was going to go. Uh, that brings us around to us yeah. talking for the first time. Well, yeah, I mean, I got that email and just blew my mind i was i i don't know i don't want to say never been that excited because i have had two daughters and i have married this beautiful woman over here so i've had some big moments in my life but that is in the top they're not even one better than the other there's like five big moments and that's one of them and of course i was i don't remember remember my response but i know i immediately was like fuck yes like yeah now yesterday let's go and I don't remember how it went down. I think phone numbers were exchanged, phone calls happened. I remember spending hours on the phone with you. And the really the, the one of the coolest parts about this was just that and I hadn't physically met you yet, but you know, because both of us are thinking, you know, I could meet my dad and he could just be this like really kind of weird, annoying kind of yeah, but at least I got to meet my dad and I know where I came from. And I'm thinking the same thing. Like, I could meet my son, but he could just be this little God, you know, not little. Why am I using the word little? He could just be some kind of person that I would never want to hang out with. But I could at least I've met my son. That's my son. And, you know, who knows what you're into? But I'm like, wow, nice to meet you. Have a good life. See you every couple of years. Bye. But wow. I mean, we get on this phone call and under 40 seconds, I'm just like, this is like my this is someone. Take away the son part. Someone your I blood. would be best friends yes. with. Like your hobbies, my hobbies, you're the way you talk, the way, the, your humor, my humor. I mean, it was just like love at first sight, absolute bonding to the deepest possible level. And then, and then still, I'm just like, well, let's see what he gets here. You know, that's a phone call. And of course, it quickly moved to, let's fly him out. We got to come out. We got to see you. So a couple weeks later, you're out here. I think you're supposed to stay with us for a, a few week. a week. And we extended the trip a month, I think, because everything's going. I mean, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here, but. We can go to you, Holly, a little bit on this, but yeah, we go to the airport, meet this young man, and it's on. Like I don't, I I don't even go to work. I think that whole month. No, we just took a month off and just ran around and did cool stuff and went out to nice dinners and went to the beach and I don't even remember what we did. We were just played yard games and just really loved up on each other and caught up on nineteen years of a relationship yeah. that hadn't started. And yet. I I don't, I don't mean to cut you off. I do have to highlight something. For you, because um, so many people say this to me when I tell this story, they're just like, wow, how did how did the wife re respond to that deal? I'm like, open arms, 100% the whole time. Like, no hesitation from you. I think it just it shows your character and the kind of person you are. I mean, he's easy to love, too. I mean, I think either of us might have been like, nice to meet you, beat it. 
if you'd been something else, but I mean, yeah. it was just so natural for all of us, yeah. the bonding and the love between you and him. I mean, hell, there were many times where I'm like, I think she's closer to him than me. I mean, the two of you, it's like watching, it's half the time it's brother and sister, and then there's mommy son moments too. It's kind of a weird- I've had to discipline you a few times. Yeah, yeah there's, there, you've, you've put me in my place a few times. I've needed it. I think I've slapped you a few times. Yeah, I've asked for it. So it went, it went amazing. And that, that, that week turned into a month and then the, he flew home and basically moved, you moved out here, yeah. lived with us for a couple years. No, so he, more than that. I don't even know. Um, just yeah, getting his feet wet, getting, getting, getting jobs, get, got into to college, get started on his college work to get his first degree, eventually moved out, lived nearby. But basically there's 10 years there where we were very, very close. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, you know, obviously you would go to work and I would too, but we were almost every weekend, every all our time off was spent together and all that. And that, and that brings us kind of forward into m not where we are today. Cause life has changed quite a bit since those days. But I just wanted to highlight that there was a good decade where we made up for lost yeah. time. We spent so much time together for yeah. 10 years. It was every special event that you guys did. I was there and, Vice versa. I mean, I, don't, I didn't personally have that many special events. But yeah, we were tight. Mm -hmm. If you guys were doing something big, I was part of it. And vacations we did together. It was it's awesome. Yeah. We we uh, got 19 years worth of bonding done probably in that first two weeks. <laughs> but we <laughs> yes. extended it for we a had decade. a lot of fun. But yeah, it was, it was, it was beautiful. That's uh that's when we came up to this vest I'm wearing for those of you watching. This is our our knees high. This is our family gang, the knees high gang. This is my this is my this is my my knees high name on the bottom. Uran. 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 And that's Uli and that's Ustin. Ustin. And there's a lot of shenanigans that we I don't know if we're gonna get, get into all of those on this episode. There it just displays yeah. our our love for each other and how much fun we have yeah, and yeah. how much we are all three aligned. Yeah. You know? yeah it's... There were some questions that you had asked some listeners and whatnot. And oh, yeah. I think this is a good segue to ask one of them just because. Yeah, well, just about... so everybody knows, I threw out a, a reel this morning saying I was going to have this episode. And if anybody had any questions about Dustin or this whole thing, let me know. And a lot of good ones came through and let's, let's go through a couple. One of them it. that um, rings a bell right now, because I think it's an appropriate time is we heard about how, you know, we both felt and how we all met, but what were your adoptive parents thinking at the time? You know, all of a sudden I'm sure you made a phone call and I found my birth dad mm -hmm. and I'm going to visit him. And then two weeks later, I'm coming to move in with my birth dad. How no. did they um, receive that? Yeah. Um, well, to start that answer off, I should illustrate that before I left Utah, like things were not super great uh, with my parents there, just because of the things we already talked about. Like I wasn't doing anything super out of line, but I was not following the program, the Mormon program laid out before me. So before I even graduated high school, my dad booted me out of the house. So I was living with a buddy and it wasn't a super cohesive family unit as far as my relationship to them at that point. There is, and this is honestly more about my dad. Would Love him. Mind, what's the age difference? That's another question. Yeah. So quick. that should be noted. When I was adopted, there was an approximate 30 year age gap between my adopted mom and my adopted dad. So it's pretty unusual, abnormal age difference. Should also mention mention that like a month before I was adopted, uh, my sister adopted sister was adopted, Alicia. So she's approximately my same age, but she was adopted a few months before me. But my dad right now, I'm 35 right now. He is 89. So do the math. I mean, when I was adopted, he was 54, 60, I think. Right? Maybe closer to 60. Anyways, yeah, he was an older. Yeah. He was. Approaching senior citizen status when he got a six month old baby. So, anyways, he was a lot older than most. He's the one that was the most disappointed in me. My mom has always been pretty loving and accepting and and uh, open to who I am, regardless of my religious inclinations. But my dad has always been pretty vocal about his disappointments and expectations, and things like that. So when I left for the military, I was no longer like, you know, living at home. I've basically been exiled from the house because my dad was disgusted by my life choices. 
So then this all comes to light and I come home for a few days after they haven't seen me in a year and I've done something with my life other than graduating high school. And I tell them, and I don't remember all the ins and outs of it, but I tell them I met my biological dad and this is how it all went down. And he's flying me out to San Diego to meet him. And I think initially they were just like, that's awesome. Cool. But they don't really know, just like I don't really know what's about to happen. How is this going to go? What's it going to mean? How's it going to affect the future? So they're both very supportive as far as I can remember. But uh, overall, after we meet and we obviously hit it off like as best as you could have hoped for. There was never anything said by my mom anyways that suggested she was disappointed or hurt. But I do have vague memories. It's been quite a while. My dad saying a few things like just passive aggressive stuff. That's kind of his MO where he'd be, you know, well, that's great that you found your, you know, your biological dad. Now you can go, you know, live out in San Diego and get covered with tattoos and do whatever you want. Stuff like that. And I'm like, But at that point, I've been subjected to his like passive stabs for so long. They kind of just like rolled off my back, like, you know, water off a duck. I'm just like, okay, whatever. Um, That's that's the only thing I can remember of like negative stuff that was said. I think everyone eventually met, you know, they came out and I think it was before my college graduation. Everyone had come out and I think we everything worked well that time. The college thing was a little different. (laughs) But I think once they met you, they're like, these, I mean, I, I want to, I'll say this, like, look, it, it would be very easy to like to, to, to say some stabbing comments towards the Mormon religion and how they pressured you to be a part of something you didn't want right. to be a part. And that might be true, but I mean, no, I mean, when I put myself in their shoes, I think that was pretty big of them, the way they handled it. Like yeah. I, I was expecting a little more like fuck this guy me and fuck this relationship and just we don't want yeah. nothing to do with it but they they put in effort they came out and visited they were polite i mean there was that i think one night where your dad got a little pissed off and you know but i mean when you think about a guy that age and i mean i'm just put myself in his shoes and suddenly his son is like you said moving to southern california to live with his tattoo artist dad meanwhile i start ripping a fucking whole chest stomach suit on you it's not like he's I'm, I'm like covering your entire you body in mean, tattoos still hide it. Yeah. yeah yeah i do kind of and you're uh, working you know you are going to college but you're a bartender yeah. and i think they were keen to some of our vacations and things we we're up to and yeah. it's not i mean hey look me and holly have our shit together we own four businesses together we we hold our stuff but we did we go out and do we especially back then did we party a little i think they knew about all that so yeah i'm sure from his perspective it was like going into the demon's dungeon to yeah. a certain degree. Yeah. I remember when they first came out to meet us and I was pregnant with Harper at the time and I'm trying to get everything ready, like, you know, appetizers. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a big batch of iced tea. And you're like, Oh, oh no, Holly. No, you don't, you don't make, you don't make iced tea for the Mormons. I'm like, well, then what do I make? <laughs> but it was just, I was like so nervous and they are lovely. I must say. I absolutely I mean, again, I think they handled it well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that showed some big character. We were polar opposites, but at the end of the day, there's just love. I mean, you 100% agree with all that. If you actually, yeah, that just sparked some thought on my end. Like, if you think about how they handled it compared to how I know a lot of Mormon, I know a lot of Mormon stories. I like to the, it's not uncommon for someone to leave the faith or just become an independent thinker. And be like basically exiled from a family mm-hmm. and like you're dead to us unless you want to repent and yeah. They wouldn't fly out and visit the adopted no. father. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they did lots quite of credit the opposite. Well, I'm sorry, the uh, biological father. Yeah. yeah. So I they do deserve some credit there. And I and like I said, like my mom I think has always been way more okay with everything. My dad, everything's good now. It's fifteen years has passed and everyone gets along and and I think they you know, a lot of the anxiety that they probably had initially of like, oh my God, our son's going to like the devil's lair in Southern California. Like he's probably going to get And he's tattoos. already kind of a rowdy kid. This yeah. is going to think that this yeah. is going to be the thing that kills him. Yeah. He'll, he'll end up in prison with, you know, what or whatever they thought was going to happen didn't happen. And I actually flourished when I moved here more so than I ever had in Utah. So I think that kind of like juxtaposed you know, met their, their anxiety of what was going to happen was met with like, holy shit, our kids doing something, uh, got in college, you know, started going to college, start growing up and doing like good, good things, like things that you could put on a, like a metric and say, oh, he's checking these boxes. So I think that that was probably really interesting for them because I would assume their expectations were like, oh, 
He's a, he's a lost soul. He's going out there to the, <laughs> the land of where God is not well. It probably didn't look so good on paper. It. I get it. Yeah. But then they saw what I was doing and were like, well, that kind of challenges our, our uh, preconceived notions of how this is going to play out. So yeah, that worked out really well. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's, it's poetic. I mean, so often in life, we get taught things in these unusual ways, you know, and yeah. I don't know what they learned from it. I'm, I'm assuming a little bit here. But I think there had to have been some growth on your father's part and yep. your mother's part yeah. of being a little more like, huh, yeah, we have a path that works for a lot of people, but some people in this path, it, it doesn't work and it actually hurts them. And this other world out there, this world of whatever I am, I don't know what, I, I'm a tattoo artist guy or just non-religious world it doesn't always end in destruction sometimes it's where people can flourish better and find their own connection spiritually which i i know you have you know yeah. i think i would call myself maybe even a buddhist but eastern philosophy rules my path in life probably you too holly i think all three of us kind of right we are definitely more that realm and but anyway they got i mean everyone's learning through this right you're learning compassion and patience with people that are just trying to give you love I mean, as fucked up as it is, your dad giving you those jabs and writing you those letters, telling you that you should be home, you should be a Mormon. That's just love. Yeah. That's just him thinking, this is the safe, I'm trying to protect my child. Yeah. And, and all I know is this is the safest path. And then the years go on. And I think what was revealed is, would it have been the safest path? My prediction, if you had gone back to that yeah. world, you I don't think it would have went well for no, you. No, no. There was no path forward for me in that situation. I like these questions that some of the some of the uh, people have written in. Yeah, what else have? What are some of the good ones they wrote in here? Okay, things I didn't think of. Okay, this is a good one. I actually found my biological father when I was twenty six. I have questions for Dustin. I don't know the whole story. How old was he when he was adopted? And how old were his adoptive parents? I think we already went over that. And did it make you feel any different or less than being that you found out and knew that you were adopted? Good question. Yeah. Uh, well, I was adopted really, really young. I don't know the exact, but it was, I think, I mean, it was less than a month old as far as I know. Because Tanya had been sent to some, I don't know what you'd call it, but some place where uh, a bishop would send his daughter to have like a private birth and not let the community Community. find out about it like so anywho i think i was probably a couple weeks like she gave birth to me and you know they probably she probably hugged me or something and they were like okay and before i was born there were there was paperwork and stuff in progress to adopt me and that was done through the lds church that's a kind of another story but the reason i ended up with the adopted parents i did was because of their faith and tanya's parents faith religious affiliation so but yeah i was i was like i'm gonna say a couple weeks as soon as i was probably cleared to go home with what normally would be your mom i was taken from tanya and placed with a family who i've actually met and i can't remember their names but i met them way later in life and they had me for i think it was seven weeks well all the like forms were completed and everything was approved by whoever like apparently it was kind of complicated because this all went down in Nevada, I think, or Arizona. Anyways, three states legislations or um, bureaucracies had to be worked out to get me back to California. So it's like three weeks of me being with someone else and I went home with my adopted parents. And I, what was the other part of that question? Did it make me feel less than knowing that I was adopted? No, I don't think so. It wasn't until I was older that I actually even started thinking about the fact that there was something different. And I think that was probably in due in part to just getting older and having my own more independent thoughts of like, Oh, that's, I am adopted. So my parents, why, why wouldn't they have me? Like, why, why would someone adopt someone versus having a natural birth and thinking about that and then creating up my own little childish, like stories of like, maybe my parents were, were like bad people or maybe they were destitute or something. Like I just had little like stories in my head. And then of course that, was going alongside the fact that I have an adopted sister who I I love very much. Alicia was adopted right before me. 
I think also your you also Neil has um, two other yeah. kids that are a good 15, 20 years older than At you least. that were adopted too. So it was kind of a normal. Yeah, I it started, wasn't foreign to you. Yeah, and I started kind of doing the like the more you know adult thinking on it. Like, oh, okay, so my dad was married before he married my mom. He's got two other kids. They were both adopted, but they're like to me, they're like old people. They're my adopted siblings from my dad's original marriage are as old as my adopted mom, if that makes sense. Kind of mm -hmm. confusing, but my adopted mom is in her late fifties. Maybe she's 60 now. I'm not sure. But the two kids that my dad adopted before he married my adopted mom are the same age as my adopted mom. Hence the massive age difference between those two. So I think, but anyways, coming back to the original question, like realizing, okay, those two were adopted, didn't really know them, never really had a relationship with the older siblings from the previous marriage, but like realizing like me and my sister are so different. We don't look anything like each other and just realizing we have different parents and then starting to think about why, why are we different? But I don't think it ever made me feel less than or anything like that. I never felt like poor me or, you know, anything like that. I just had questions, I suppose. More important to me the older I got, but I was too busy being a wild man up until I joined the military to Silly spend boy. too much time on it. You know, just like, hmm, there's some unanswered questions there, but what's next? And I'd run off to the next thing. So, all right. I think you kind of answered this. Did he feel like something was always missing growing up or like he didn't fully belong? And how did that affect his relationship with himself and, and women? How does that affect your self worth? Mm. Sounds like. No, that's a good one. Like, I definitely do. Yes, there is something that I feel that, not that it's hurting me now, I suppose, but there is something like missing when I see how this is mostly between, oh, how do I say this? I see, you know, the normal nuclear family and how kids interact with their parents and how there's like this unconditional bond that can't be broken regardless of what happens or what the kid does or what the parent does. I don't feel like my parents don't love me unconditionally. I could say that more. I know they both love me. My mom's a little bit more unconditional, but there's a bond I think that can't be fabricated when mother pushes a child out of her. Something happens on a, on a cellular, cellular level, right? That cannot be replaced. And then there's the breastfeeding and the, that whole thing. I think that creates a, like a chemical intangible bond that you cannot get any other way. Mm. So I do, I do feel that a little bit where I think I'm a little bit different than some folks because I don't have the same relationship with my, with, with anybody, I guess, because there was that separation of being adopted and my parents, I think for my mom, you know, a, going and picking up a baby is different than nine months of pregnancy and reading the books and like rubbing your stomach and like eventually yeah. your baby comes out and you're like, Oh my God, you kiss it, you breast that whole thing, she didn't have any of that. So I think that makes a different kind of and relationship. And on this note, you didn't have something here. And it should be noted that your biological mother, there was many attempts for the two of you to meet. And I don't want to, I'm not here to put anyone on blast, but the truth is the truth. Tanya, your biological mother, basically thwarted all of those attempts. Mm -hmm. And to this day, you've never met her. Right. Yeah. Which... Is that its was own. one of the questions, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, I, yeah, I, I think I, I hit all that. That's, there's differences, I think, when you're not conceived. It's not a normal, uh, you don't get Well, that. I think the second part of the question is, has, has that affected your relationship with women? That was part of the question. I think possibly. It's hard to say because I was also, you know, self-destructive. Not anything too, too heinous, but I had, you know, bad habits and it was a little irresponsible for a long time. So... I dynamited a lot of my own relationships, but part of me has always wondered, is that because there's this underlying distrust that, that it's going to fall apart anyways, or maybe because I don't have that baseline connection to a female where I was, I know the woman that gave birth to me and I know that that's a rock solid foundation that's never going to go anywhere that maybe I self-sabotage or do things like that. I think I'm over that. I think. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it, it should be known. <laughs> uh, Dustin is happily married man. Yes. Yeah. And how long is, have you and Shannon been together? So we've been together. Well, we got married in August of 23. So we're over a year and a half, I think. 
it's pretty married, new. but yeah, married together for, for like five years, something five like years, four or five years. Yeah. Um, and, and it's great, super happy. And she's amazing, and you yeah. guys are amazing. And, yeah, and yeah. I, I'm listening to all this, and I agree. I mean, I was there, Holly was there for these younger relationships when you were living with us and you were yeah. living nearby, yeah. and there was. You were partying and tending bar and, you know, and there was, yeah. I definitely, you would agree. I think you made some mistakes in those relationships. Yeah. Was that because you're adopted? I don't know. I don't think you know. <laughs> or maybe it's just know. young man being a little crazy young yeah, man. Yeah, being yeah. dumb, you know, but but also just learning how to be an adult. So yeah. I can't really attribute that directly to being adopted. But I, I do think that sometimes in like my deepest introspective moments, I think that maybe I do relate a little bit different because of those, because of the difference in how I came into the world. But I don't think it's anything that's held me back, or I'm not, I'm not suffering. No complaints. Everything's. I mean, all right. you could still breastfeed, so I could, I could latch you. Are we on. still going to do that simulation yeah. birth simulation. between you and him? <laughs> Off the end and of cover the boat, him in Vaseline and, 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 and then shove him across your belly <laughs> and spurt him onto the floor. <laughs> He'd crawl back <laughs> up and, and nurse on your titties. I'll cure all your thing. emotional pain. Yeah. Maybe that's it. I just I never got the nutrients that come from. <laughs> oh, that gives you a little insight on what the things we talk about. Well, you have had Holly's breast milk, though. To be fair. Oh, it's true. Yes. It's true. Yeah, we made uh, not we straight made from the titty though. Or, like no, no we just, just took shots. Shot. Yeah, just unchanged. We shots. just because we're this is on video too. <laughs> we should if we can find the video, I'll put it on this cut for the show. But I did yeah. pump and dump one night because we were tying <laughs> it on with some uh, some vino, and. Dustin's like, I've never had breast milk before. And I'm like, well, would you like some? <laughs> Tainted with a little red we wine. Cheers. <laughs> and they both cheers. And you quite liked it. You're like, it's uh, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, we got to get the no, video. No, you said, no. it tastes like I just licked a rusty girder. <laughs> <laughs> what? It tasted, no. No, I did. It tasted like... Uh, very Metal. metallic. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, I was like, God. That like that's in the video. It's super funny. We'll have to get it. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. Ava and Harper. Jeez. Oh, I'm sure it's <laughs> that's just the nutrients. My liquid gold it was sweet. Is... It was like sugary. What's a girder? Metal. A yeah, girder yeah. is like a metal um, part of a construction of a building. A girder, right? Yeah. It's like a beam, a metal beam. Yeah, I can't remember what words I used, but oh. I remember I'm like that tastes like oxidized steel. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. We we'll find that video. Out? All right, what do you got next? We got to get this going. Okay. Um, okay. When you guys connected, did he feel closure or a sense that there was a missing piece that had been filled and fulfilled in your life? So when we all connected mm. specifically with you and Aaron, did you feel like there was a missing piece? 1000%. Was... Like that is such a strong thing. Great question. 100%. Because I was always, didn't know what I was missing. It's kind of hard to articulate, but absolutely. I met Aaron and I was like, well, there it is. There's who I am. That's like explains my mannerisms and things that I've kind of been told were unacceptable behaviors. <laughs> this guy's getting away with it. <laughs> yeah. No, but I just like saw someone. I guess it was reassuring because I met someone that I was like so much like me in his mannerisms, his communication style. His presentation, his loving, open nature, his approachability, sense of humor, the way he lights up a room, all these things that are just great qualities. I saw someone that was had those and I saw myself in you. And then I saw that in addition to having that, you were successful and had a beautiful family and life was working for you. And I think before that, I was always just like, I wonder how this whole shit show is going to play out. Because as far as the people that raised me, I think they have kind of written me off as a complete liability, unknown what that thing is going to turn into. And I was still trying to figure myself out. And then I met you. And I was like, oh, guys, just like me. Oh my God. He, he carved out a beautiful life, hyper successful, super fun to be around a little wild like that's me i could i things are gonna work out like it was like a whoo i'm gonna be all right it was it was honestly a sense of like everything's okay like i, think I you can explain it one time to me you're like i finally feel like i belong yeah to a, a tribe yeah like, this is my tribe oh it just felt yeah I, that is such a powerful thing that's hard to put into words but i felt like i'm home like there it is. There is, and that that's beautiful. Like, well, and to be accepted the way I mean, I'm, 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 it sounds like I'm bragging. But I mean, it was very easy for us to love you and love your qualities and your personality. Whereas yeah. I think you, you know, you grew up in a world where some of that was kind of more shut down or looked at like you shouldn't. 
that's not a good thing to be. Right. And we were like, be that more. Right. Like we love that part of you. Yeah. Like, oh, you're crazy? How crazy do you want to get? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm doing crazy shit too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was just more, I think, uh, uh, an environment where you're like, I'm. That's nothing wrong with me. I'm perfectly yeah. normal. That, you know? That's another. That's just another part of it. It's like, there's nothing wrong with me. Right. I'm all right. You know. So that was yeah, that was beautiful. I love these questions because I thought I knew everything about you, but this is getting even deeper than oh, I ever thought. Oh boy. Yeah. Let's go deep. Um, okay. Did you have any anger or resentment? not necessarily to you, Aaron, or myself, that is in his childhood that was because your childhood is different than Ava and Harper's. So Ava and Harper, Ava's our oldest and Harper's yeah. our uh, 13 year old. So not in the sense that I wish that my childhood was more like Ava or Harper's. I don't feel that. And I don't feel any resentment. Honestly, I, I might've when I was young, like 18, 19, 20, maybe felt a little bit like like I got, well, up until I had met you guys, I might have felt a little bit slighted by the whole thing. But even as I'm saying that, I'm like, I wasn't slighted. I had everything I needed to thrive. And I've got a more global view of humanity now. Or I'm like, for me to even talk about getting the short end of the stick is gross when you think about the world as a whole. That's another, that's a rabbit hole I could go down. So generally speaking, I'm not mad or resentful towards anything. I think if anything, there was a period of my life where I was, yeah, I definitely, when I was young, I went through a period of anger towards my parents. Cause I was thinking like, Hey, I'm, I always felt like I'm a good loving person that I would, I would help someone in need. No questions asked. I would do the right thing. Like, I felt like I had all the qualities of, a, of a good person, but I was kind of made to believe that since I wasn't doing the religious thing that I was somehow flawed. And so that that made me angry, I think, for a while. It made me kind of have resentment towards my parents for a while because it's like if the religion you b believe in is true and there's a God that's going to determine where we go and we die based on the character of our heart and our intentions, then I'm good. Like if he's omnipotent and knows the what's going on in here, I know I'm fine because I have no ill will and I just want to help people and I want to spread love and happiness and be a good person, a good friend, and be honest, and blah, blah. So that that did piss me off for a while. Where I was like, I can't believe that you guys think I'm a bad person because I'm not. So the other part of that, I guess, would be I don't have any resentment of not being raised by my biological dad or you because... My breast I, milk tastes like metal. Because, yeah, you're too metallic. <laughs> Your pH would not have worked for me. <laughs> the ever. I think oh. I just... I don't... I can't imagine changing it because... It made you it's who perfect. you are. Well, yeah, I just I I am who I am because of what's happened. So I don't trust me. Change that. If um at sixteen I would have taken on the task of raising you, I think that might not have gone so well. I think the same thing. I'm like, if you raised me, <laughs> there probably would have been a point where I was like, fuck. We you, probably Dad. wouldn't be and, talking to each other yeah, today because I would have. I mean, first of all, I couldn't have. I couldn't have financially. I mean, I guess right. my parents could have helped. And if I had pushed the issue, maybe I could have forced the issue. I mean, me and the idea of Tanya, we would have ended up divorced. Who knows what happens to you during that crash? Um, meanwhile, you're being raised at this point. You're five years old. You're being raised by a 22-year-old divorced father with no career. No, Now I'm not. You know, this thing could have just went down into a shitville so yeah. easily. And that's the reason my parents said, abortion and that's the reason her family said adoption everyone saw that like so i guess what i'm getting at is our the this relationship is beautiful and, yeah. and amazing and it couldn't even in my opinion couldn't even be here if it hadn't gone the way it had yeah. gone and so when when the question's asked do you have regrets or re remorse or resentment i think what you're saying is no because i'm here today in this situation because yeah. it went that way and, and there's there i don't i don't know another relationship where a 35 year old dude and his you know dad and stepmom like have a friendship like we do like yeah because I if i had raised you i would have had to have disciplined you we would have had fights we would have had yeah. we'd have baggage yeah we'd, have, we'd baggage. have to we'd be unwinding that baggage today but what we got was special in its own weird way yeah. which is a totally clean relationship where i never i mean no yeah, diapers I never, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm being fair though. I mean, there were some dad moments where I had to be like, hey bro, like don't yeah. fucking leave that shit. You know, you're my roommate, clean up your mess. Or, yeah. You know, regular stuff. Right. But right. we never had, had to have those big disciplinary moments that fathers and sons and mothers and sons have. So we have this relationship that's mostly just friendship. Yeah. 
you know, which is yeah. kind of unique, you know, right. and that's super cool. Yeah. I, yeah, no regrets in that, in that department. All right. I'm um, getting through this. Okay. This one is for Aaron. Having two girls, is there a difference looking at your son? Do you see yourself in him? Do you have any regrets on how things went? And would you have done anything different in hindsight? Good question. Yeah. Um, do I mean, obviously having a son is totally different than, than having daughters in, in, in most obvious ways. I mean, and that, that's not to even skip over like the little nuances, your eye movement, your posture, the way you react in situations. Things that you do that could, I didn't teach you. They're just in your DNA. It's fascinating to watch that stuff. So yeah, I see myself in you uh, in a huge, huge way in ways that I, I love and respect too. I mean, your natural um, tendency towards honesty and cooperation and just being like, what's the right thing to do right now? You, that's your nature. It's always right. been my nature. I right. mean, I'm not going to sit here and say I've never hurt someone's feelings or made a mistake in my life. But never, it's always, it, it, it will always have been a mistake that I look back, oh shit, I shouldn't have, man, I think I hurt some feelings when I said that. It's never on purpose. It's just, I'm vivacious and I can get a little wild and accidentally like a fucking gorilla in a tea shop, you know, I accidentally break things, but it's never on purpose. Right. It's just, and that's how your nature is. And that's, and I, and I love that about you and respect that about you a lot. If you were a little scallywag that like was doing little white lies and stealing 50 bucks out of your friend's wallet or any of that fucking shit had ever happened around us i don't know where i'd be with you like i would i I respect wouldn't be there but i do i have just incredible respect for you because the way you live your life so yeah i see that in you it sounds like i'm complimenting myself because i'm like (laughs) you're super awesome because you're just like me that's why i love you if you didn't act like me i don't know if i would have loved you (laughs) <laughs> it's true it's true what can you do <laughs> okay so that was aaron for holly what was it like initially finding out that aaron had fathered another child were there any fears that this would change your relationship or your own family dynamic no i i mean when i found out i think on our like first date i mean aaron on our first date you asked me do i want kids i said yes and you told me you wanted two and you said their names and from there, it was just like, we were just so connected and you told me about Dustin and I just thought, gosh, you know, over the time that we had together before we got married and then some just love everything about you. And I'm like, gosh, if there's anything that's connected to Aaron, especially from, you know, and on DNA level, I need to know this person. I need to, to, to see this person in real life. And mm-hmm. so, no, I, like I said, I just always had this weird vision of, him coming to the door in this lumber yellow lumberjack outfit <laughs> over hi i think my dad lives here mm-hmm. and so no it was just i couldn't wait i absolutely couldn't wait and i think I, it's so funny how i kind of tried to find you and then a month and a half later how the universe works out you know yeah. you're emailing aaron so no i thought that it was it was incredible um as far as our own family dynamic no i just wanted to, i didn't know what you would be like but I knew it would be rad and it was better than I could have ever. Imagined. No. You've always been um, very good to me. That looks um, weird. Okay. Oh, the girls. Okay. There was a question about the girls and their relationship with Dustin. So this Ava, so I just had a, you know, our daughter's 18. Um, Ava was just under three when Dustin came to visit for the first time. And I feel really bad about this because at the time, you know, they were so far apart in age. This is so weird. I'm so sorry. This is embarrassing. We can cut this. I was, you know, a young mom. I think I was 29 at the time. And we picked Dustin up from the airport. And I had told Ava, who was, again, almost three, hey, you know, you're going to meet your your brother. And I don't think she really understood the concept. And we took you up to pick her up from preschool that day. And I don't think I really understood at the time what that would mean to her. You know, here she's first child, only grandchild, only niece. And the next thing, you know, you know, I'm just like, hi, you know, be as excited as we are. Look at how amazing this boy is. You know, this is your brother. Two weeks later, he's moving in to what was my office. I moved out, became your room. And my office was now her playroom. And I think now that she's 18 years old and, you know, we recently had this conversation, you know, she shared with me like, yeah, my whole world 
got turned upside down, mom. You know, you were my, my only mom, my mom. And I was your only child and dad's, I was daddy's girl. And you guys were so excited when you first met him. I watched all of that and yeah, it affected me. And she even says to this day, she has a little bit of, I don't want to say jealousy necessarily, but, um, I think that if I could have done it all over again, I definitely would have been much more sensitive introducing Dustin into Ava's life. But at the same time, watching the two of you, I think you lived with us for a good four or five years. Right when Harper was born, I think, yeah, it's just maybe three years. And it was beautiful watching the two of you. You guys really bonded on a lot of levels. And seeing that relationship grow was beautiful. But it was really therapeutic, I think, recently to talk to her about it and finally ask her like her thoughts. And I feel like such an asshole as a mother to not even think about that. I think I was so focused on just wanting you to feel accepted and wanting Aaron to have this relationship with you. So as far as Harper, Harper was, you know, you met her in the hospital. You got to see me grow her in my belly and everything. And so, you know, she's, she's, she's never known anything different. She's never known anything different. Um, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, I mean, I want to add to that. I mean, I, I get what you're saying and Ava will probably listen to this, but I think it was probably a good, I mean, this idea of a child being raised as the center of a universe in a family, I don't think that plays out super well. I have some friends who remained the center of their family's universe. And they're some of the most entitled pricks I've ever met in my life because they never got knocked down and realized that the, that they had to share and there's like attention is shared from mom and dad. And, and, you know, if there's just something beautiful there, I'm sure it hurt. I'm sure it was uncomfortable in certain moments for all of us in some way, but, um, I think it was probably a blessing for, for Ava to kind of get exposed to that. And Ava's thriving. She's oh, she's doing, doing great. Okay. It's not like there's permanent stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the it's other amazing. layer I would add is the real, probably the part, which I'll take responsibility for is, is Dustin and I bonded at such a high level, right. um, like best, best best friends boy boy style you know <laughs> and so i'm running around with you like 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 a college kid and i think that i would that was where i think if there was any just anything that anybody got hurt it was because of me because i'm just like whatever ava i'm playing with dustin today i'm playing with dustin i'm ta- yeah, what what i can't hear you i'm talking to dustin you know and i definitely took that too far in my excitement for our relationship and uh i apologize for that and I'm trying to, still to this day, I'm trying to garner that in. It's just, I don't live with you every day. So when I get you, I'm like 100% Dustin, you know, and I've made mistakes in that category. So, yeah, I, I remember sensing that as things progressed. Like I started to, because th- I remember when I first met Ava, I remember that walk home from the school so vividly. She was shy and kind of just like, hmm, what is this thing? Who is this? But then like <laughs> two hours later, we're like running hot laps in the backyard and just buddies. And mm-hmm. that continued for a long time. I think up until I moved out of your guys' house, Ava and I, did, we were good. Like, and we still are good. Yeah. Was never not good. But I do remember as time progressed and she got more into like the teenage years, I do remember a little tension because then I had moved out and been doing my own thing. But when I came over, we were all kind of like, what's up? You know, let's hang out. And then and there's Ava probably being like, sweet. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it, it did. It, it, fun, it, they, know? they, it, it developed a vibe of like when they, when yeah. Ava knew you were coming over. What that meant to her was, "Bye, Dad. See you. I'll see you when Dustin goes home." Yeah. You know, and 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 that again, this falls on me as the father of this family, and I was told that by you a few times, everybody, and I was sort of a dick about it. Like, I don't care. Dustin's here. Everyone, I'll get back to you guys <laughs> when he leaves. You know, and I so it was what it was. It was what it was. And you know what's beautiful, though? I'd never heard that you had had that conversation until just now. It was recent. But I can tell that Ava and I have a, a, a budding future as siblings because I don't I didn't expect her. And I'm kind of awkward, too, because I don't know how to relate to a 16 year old that's, you know, on the national winning dance team. And is like she's doing things that I never did when I was her age. She's crushing it. You know, and she's in these upper echelons of of really proactive 
scholarly kids and I was the opposite of that. And, and I'm not, I never knew how to like get involved and communicate. And I've always kind of felt a little bit like, I feel like I'm missing the mark a little bit. Like I want to be there and I want to have, I want her to call me when something shitty happens and be like, Hey, big bro, like this guy did this or this girl, you know, I not losing sleep over that. And I understand that's, it's going to be hard to foster that with the way things, all, all the things transpired. But, but I can tell lately now that she's in college and she's an adult now, like she's been texting me a little bit and it's cool. I just really, am, I'm like fingers crossed and I love you, Ava, if you're listening to this. Well, I just you, hope that we yeah. get to like go be adults together and like go snowboarding and do things. And, and then we can talk about what it was like when my, <laughs> my uh, gingerness showed up into your young life. <laughs> And we can we can hash it all out. I don't know. Pretty much the last question is how are Aaron and Dustin Holly? How are Aaron and Dustin alike and how they're different? And what's the dynamic between myself and Dustin? We covered I, all that pretty I good. Mean, I mean, your dynamic I with Dustin. Say, you want to say I or? will say that you that from my perspective, you guys are so much alike, but there is a big difference that one of the things that I love about Dustin is you have a sensitivity that Aaron sometimes forgets about um you mm-hmm. have this softness to you that's and bullshit <laughs> <laughs> um aaron's very alpha very you know you walk into a room everyone knows you know he kind of takes over the room and and uh you get that same respect but you don't have to insert yourself in order to gain that not not like nothing diss to you but he just has this, <laughs> no, he's, yeah. he's got this softness <laughs> to him that is just so loving and so so Yo, sweet. you're nailing it I, that is true and i and I, I wish i had more of that you're very you're much more patient you're much more of a listener you're much more um thoughtful and um, you have just a softer energy which is more approachable and less intimidating yeah we went over it our relationship you and i has just been like i said best friends yeah. but i've put you in your place a few times i mean <laughs> when you first came out again we had a couple weeks together but the f- day three aaron had to go to work he had a client flying in from out of the country so he couldn't get out of it or anything and he's like okay holly you're you, it's you and dustin and i had this Our best friends, family, close friends had this wine party. They threw the best parties. And, you know, here Dustin from uh, Utah had never really had anything over like a Coors Light 3% alcohol. And it's this Mm -hmm. wine tasting party. And they are very, you know, I learned everything. I don't know much, but everything I do know about wine is from them. And he was my plus one at this party. (laughs) And it was a riot watching him. He's like, this is champagne. Wow, I love champagne. This is this is Merlot and learning about legs and all the different notes and it was hilarious. Next thing we know, he's dancing on the island and uh got to I laid my first tattoo on you. It's a little little wine goblet that he just kept filling. <laughs> we kept going, you use a champagne flute for that. It's champagne. Drink it out of a champagne. No, I like the I like the I like the the red wine glass. So on his ass like, is a yeah, the nice like the wine glasses. goblet with some bubbles <laughs> coming out. But no, we were just like oh. buddies. You know, I was a stay-at-home yeah. mom with Ava, and you and I were just um, just partners in crime. Oh, made we a lot were, of fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody, I think we're wrapping this up. I think it's time. I just, I, I think I'd like to, in closing, and I'll let you guys say anything you want to say. But this is the the family episode, the holiday episode, and. And I think it's a time in, of the year where we all count our blessings, you know, and what we have to be thankful for, yeah. the things that are actually important. And uh, for me, they're, 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 they're sitting in this room right in front of me right here. So I love you both so much. I love you, Dustin, so much. And I think oh, I'm speaking for Holly a little bit here, but you in, in our lives and how that all happened is just one of the biggest, greatest, fucking coolest things that have ever happened to me. And it still continues to be that cool. And I'm just looking forward to, you know, by the way, everybody, we, we had convinced, uh, Dustin many years ago, Hey, you know, why don't you move up to like Montana, dude, you grew up in the mountains of Utah. Like I think you, you dig it there. You could ride dirt bikes and snowmobiles and fish and go down rivers and shit. So uh, that's another story, but we, we took him up there, introduced him to a few people. Fuck two months later, he's lived there ever since still living in Montana, met his beautiful wife, Shannon in Montana has his home up there, has his dogs up there, has his, his rafts and his snowmobiles. And he's living this beautiful mountain lifestyle that we go up and visit him all the time. And what I'm getting at with that story is I'm looking forward to the years to come because, you know, I'm getting a little more free time. I'm going to plan on being up there more. You guys are talking about 
the next phase of your relationship, yeah. which who knows, maybe maybe you'll be a grandma, Holly, someday. It's, we're soon. not allowed to say that word. It's a different name for it. And, and by the way, if there's any more Aaron kids out there, you know, come to mama. You can, you can be next. <laughs> Those ones I'm don't kidding. speak English. <laughs> Surprise. None of them have popped up yet. <laughs> uh, I did not do Ancestry.com for a reason. I think you would have had to cheat on me for that to happen because of how long we've been together. <laughs> yeah, you meet any of them now, they're going to be in their 40s. Um, all right. Well, anyways, right. I, I that's what I had to say. Do you guys want to say anything before we wrap this up? Nisai. Nisai. I love Nisai you guys so much. Nisai and no complaints. Nisai. Nisai. Boom. No complaints. Thank you guys for tuning in. That is officially the family episode of Chats and Tats. I want to say thank you to all the fans that have been staying in touch with me, especially giving me personal messages. It's been really inspiring. Um, keep them coming. Keep the shares coming. Keep the likes coming. Keep the subscriptions coming. 2024 is around the corner. It's going to be a huge year. This show started January this year. So in January, it'll be our one-year anniversary. I'm learning a lot about this business, you could call it, but... I'm learning that this year was just about getting my feet on the ground, getting the roots planted. Well, all that's done, and we've got a good system going, and I look forward to uh, a huge year next year. Great guest lineup coming your way. Thank you to Sullen, my sponsor, Ryan and Jeremy, always taking care of the tattoo community and taking care of me at this show. So huge shout-out to Sullen. If you guys are interested, sullenclothing.com. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace out.